Polymers are an incredibly important group of uh, compounds that have a whole host of uses. Um, they're not just the kind of plastics that you think about um, in terms of plastic bags and Lego bricks, things like that, but they include a wide range of, uh, of different materials. Just a few examples, the useful as packaging materials, uh, waterproof uh, coatings on uh, raincoats, things like that, um, non-stick coatings on pants, um, it's also a polymer coat. Then you have kind of smart materials, things like hydrogels, which can be very, very absorbent um, materials uh, and other forms of smart materials, things like shape memory plastics, things like that. Um, just a very brief list, but there are absolutely thousands of, of uses. And the only thing that these all have in common is that they are formed from long chains or long chain molecules. Uh, this part means of poly here means many, mers means units. So the only thing that polymers have in common is you have to have lots of different individual units which are joined together. Um, the majority of polymers, not all of them, but a very large number of them, are formed from alkenes. So we'll go through an example and we'll have a look at one a possible example of a polymerization reaction. And we'll start off with a nice simple one. We'll start off with ethene. So if you think back, eth means two carbon atoms because it's ethene. We've got a double bond between them. Um, because we just have one molecule here, we call this a monomer, which means one unit. And this um, this example would be ethene. So if I was going to turn this into a polymer, I can't just have one molecule because I've got nothing to chain it to. What I need is a very, very, very large number of those molecules. And the way I represent that is just um, to use a letter which we use in maths to represent um, a large number. I'm just going to use N. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a large number, which I'm going to call N ethene molecules, or monomers. And when I um, put them under high pressure and heat them up with a catalyst, what I actually do is break this double bond, and each carbon atom can form a new single bond to the next um, monomer molecule along. And so what I end up happening, what I end up getting, sorry, is the double bond breaking. I'm still going to have my four hydrogen atoms um, about these carbon atoms. But this um, carbon atom here can form a new bond to the left and can join onto a new chain. The carbon atom on the right can form a bond to another chain. Okay, So this would be joined on to another section, which would repeat over and over again. And I call this my repeat unit. Because it's a repeat unit, it's just this section that's repeating, I don't actually have to draw out all, all of the, um, um, all of the um, ethene molecules joined together. How I actually represent it is just by drawing a brackets around this section and putting an N here. So what that means is I started off with N ethene molecules. Okay, my polymer I've formed has got N repeat units all chained together. So I've now formed one giant molecule, which I call my polymer. When it comes to naming, it's dead simple. Okay, people get confused about this, but it is really, really simple. All you do is take the alkene that you form the polymer from and put poly in front of it. So this would be polyethene. Okay, um, we actually shorten that to polythene. So polythene bags, which make up the majority of plastic bags, is formed from ethene. And just one point to note: um, ethene, we we get some in crude oil. We also form a lot of it, a lot of it by cracking lung hydrocarbons. Ethene is um, non-renewable because we get the majority of it from crude oil. And therefore, plastics, once we have used them, um, uh, once we've used them up, we'll eventually run out of the ethene. Okay, which is why it's really, really important, especially going forward to the future, that we recycle most of our uh, polymers. Right. Um, don't be thrown if you're given a different uh, starting alkene. Let's say if we had um, let's say if we had this one. Okay, and this obviously looks very very different. This is called tetrafluoroethene. You've got four fluorine atoms attached to carbon atoms. Um, if you're going to draw the polymer form from this, it's exactly the same idea again. The double bond breaks and forms a single bond. And I've made a mistake. Instead of hydrogen atoms this time, I would have to have my four fluorine atoms. Okay, and make sure you draw those single bonds connecting on okay, and the brackets around this unit showing it's going to repeat. This is called uh, poly 
tetrafluoroethene, PTFE. But it also has lots of other names, for example, Teflon. Um, this is actually the nonstick coating used on, on pans. Okay, so it's just um, ethene, but with the hydrogen atoms replaced with fluorine. I've already alluded to uh, one method of disposal of polymers. You do need to know about the different uh, different methods of disposal. Because polymers are very, very stable, they're very non-reactive, most of them are non-biodegradable, which means they will not be broken down in land landfill sites. Okay, so if we were to dispose of plastics by putting them into landfill, that's going to cause quite a few issues. Okay, polymers are non-biodegradable. which means they're going to stay in landfill for a very long time. Okay, and that causes landfill sites to become full very, very quickly. In addition, since uh, we produce most of our um, polymers from non-renewable sources, um, it's going to eventually lead to, um, what is it, it's not a sustainable uh, method of production. Okay, a second method of disposing of polymers, if we don't want them to stick in landfill for years and years and years, we could burn them. Um, this is going to be, be better in some regards, and it's not going to um, cause uh, these landfill sites to to, uh, to fill up. However, since most polymers that we use are uh, based on hydrocarbons, it will release CO2, carbon dioxide, which is going to lead to global warming. Um, depending on which polymer you're burning, it could release toxic gases too, which is clearly not ideal. The final method which we could use to uh, dispose of them is by recycling. Okay, so people often get confused between reusing and recycling. Recycling is taking the polymer, okay, disposing of it and actually turning it into a new product. You might melt it down or you might um, compress it, turning it into something new. Okay, and recycling is going to conserve resources. So we'd say it's more sustainable. Um, it avoids these problems, it's not going to fill up landfill, it's not going to release as much CO2. Um, however, it can be very expensive because you have to sort each uh, polymer out into individual uh, groups. Um, so you have to separate all of the uh, polyethene from all of the polystyrene, from all of the um, polyvinyl chloride. So it can be very expensive to sort the plastics. So, there is another way which we might be able to get around this this problem of uh, plastics being non-biodegradable and that is by producing polymers which are bio, um, biodegradable and one way of doing that is by um, using cornstarch during production of our polymer so what you can do is include um, a compound based on co cornstarch in your polymer when you're making it and this will mean that the uh, polymer you form is biodegradable. So just to summarise, uh, when we're forming polymers we form them from alkenes. Make sure you're really really careful when you draw in polymers that you formed. Remember the double bond is going to break and just give you a single bond but since every carbon atom has to have four bonds in total, they're going to form bonds to the next um, uh, repeat unit along. Make sure you have your brackets round and an N before the um, um, alkene monomer, okay, to show you've got that many molecules, and at the end to show you've got this many repeat units. And naming, just put poly in front of the alkene you've got. Um, you do need to know a bit about methods of disposal as well.